What's up guys, this is Kenska from KenskaArt.com, author and illustrator for Manga for Dummies and Figure Drawing for Dummies. Today, we're going to talk about improving that digital brush stroke in Clip Studio Paint. Look guys, it's no secret, you're going to lose some of that pencil on paper feel when you're moving from traditional to digital. I mean, we're talking about a plastic nib moving across a smooth glossy surface or crying out loud. But it doesn't have to be that way. I'm going to share some tweaks you can make to your tool settings so you can compensate for those brush jitters. But before we do, if you haven't done already, go ahead, smash that subscribe and like button, turn that notification button to on, so you won't miss a beat. So without any further delay, let's get cracking. So here I have a rough sketch of a character I need to ink. So I'm gonna approach this as if I'm coming from a traditional artist, meaning pen on paper. I got my pen selected right now. I'm going to go ahead and select, let's say, my textured pen. And start making my marks. And right away, I'm noticing how tricky it can be to create that nice crisp line that I could get on paper because the surface is slippery. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to use the zoom tool for right now because there is no zoom tool in traditional drawing. Uh, you know, you can come close, get your eyes closer to the paper, but we don't have that. And not only that, I'm fighting against the, hand, the fact that my hand is sticking against the screen. Uh, my lines seem jittery. And it's not horrible, but it certainly does. I'm not getting the effect that I want compared to what I was drawing traditionally. Now if you go if I go ahead and zoom in close more even closer, uh, you know the mistakes or the the jitters are even more apparent. So what can we do about this? What can we do about this? So if you point to if I get your attention look right here to the left hand side and the uh, the details, uh, you're gonna see several options, the anti-aliasing one, uh, which basically means how soft or do you want the edges to be. Uh, you got the sharp angles. You can ignore that for now. Here, you got the stabilization. And what that does is it allows you to stabilize your strokes a little bit to compensate for those jitters. Uh, but that's that by itself is, is uh, not too relevant. Uh, compared to what I'm going to show you. Go ahead and click on this little icon right here, this wrench. It's going to open up. You're going to see correction. Okay, you're going to see all these little boxes that are not checked that you should have, um, that, you, that you have an option to see in, in the, the description box. I'm going to go ahead and hit adjust by speed, post correction. And it's a taper I got. Click out of that, and immediately you see the changes, the additions of those options. Now, what does it do? <laughs> okay, so since there's no texture on the on on the nib, what Clip Studio will do is it's going to use its little clever algorithms to figure out the resistance of your strokes based on your speed and try to compensate for that. So I'm going to hit adjust by speed. And now here's the tricky one. Post correction. Okay. What well, post correction will do, I'm going to set it on high. Uh, let's see, let's set it on low for now. Okay. So right now, this is assuming that this is the line for post correction. Okay. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and erase this, this, uh, this botched ink job right here. 
Okay, so this is without post correction. Okay, now this is with extreme post correction. Okay, so you see what it'll do is the best best way to describe it is it's going to limit the number of vertices or steps it takes to draw that curve and simplify that line. So this is extreme. You, you're going to want to aim for somewhere in the middle a 7. But as you can see, it's like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's not that, there's not that um, specific steps unless, unless, unless you go ahead and click on this arrow and you can get that type in your specified level. And I'm going to type in, I recommend 7. 7 is a good number. Okay. So we got the adjust by speed checked, the post by, well, sorry, the post correction box checked. So let's see what kind of lines we get here with this new setting. All right. Almost immediately, I feel I have a better control of the line. I'm able to draw at a more natural speed. Still, I don't get that pen to paper tactile feel, but it is a huge improvement compared to not having the, these settings checked on. If you guys want, you can always play with these things. It's better to manually enter your numbers here so you can get a little bit more specific preferences. I'm going to switch brushes for now to my favorite brush. This is called the Bit Husky brush. I forgot where I got that from. If I remember, I'll put the description down below. As you can see, I'm going to click on the post correction by adjust by speed. Put the post correction to, uh, I'm sorry, post correction to setting to seven. Hit return. I'm going to go ahead and finish this in high speed, and I'll touch base with you shortly. Okay, so I got a little carried away here, but that's okay. Uh, I want to quickly show you one more thing, and that is called the taper tool. This I'm going to go ahead and select here. Uh, let's see. Correction, post correction, the taper right here. This is the tool that I'm looking at. And what the taper tool allows you to do is extend or uh, extend the intensity of the tail. I uh, hope I make sense with that. Base, I'll show you what I mean here. So, for example, if I'm here and I have the taper at, at let's say, zero, um, I'm going to get like a stroke like uh, this. It's going to end right here where I left the pencil, where I left the paper or the tablet. I extend it right here. Look what it does. It goes. It keeps on going on as if it were a liquid ink uh, maintaining at the speed on the paper surface. What this is great for is creating that nice stroke of detail. Like if I want to go let loose like this, a nice brush stroke. It helps keep the integrity of your intentions. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's nowhere near what traditional media would be, but. It's nice to have that thing at your disposal. It also depends on your comfort level. For example, are you new to the digital? If so, how much of 
the traditional can you carry over to the digital? Uh, it is definitely possible, and these tools that I showed you will help the transition. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please list them below. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and turn that notification button on to green. And until then, in Christ's peace, bye. Without any further delay, let's get cracking.